channel or back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber. Thank you so much, you know it means the world to me. Today we are going to do the long-awaited BBL Q&A. Yay! I'm going to answer as many questions as I possibly can about my BBL, like how much was it, what was the pain level like, um, and so much more. So let's just jump right into it. Tacos and Fitness says, what is BBL? That's a really good question, obviously. Um, a BBL is a fat transfer, so like what happened was they, they took the fat from my abdomen and my back, and um, you can get it from, I believe, other areas as well, just depends on your body and your case. And then they put it into your butt and your hips, and they just transfer it and sculpt you to make you look the way that you would like, obviously, within reason. This one's from my friend Rai.senpai with two eyes, and she says, how painful was the procedure and were you awake for it? I was not awake for it, and it was, it was painful. It feel like you got hit by a truck afterwards. I, I would do another one, hypothetically, but like realistically, absolutely not because that's how painful it was. Oh my god, it was so bad. It was so bad. It was so bad. Um, yeah, so you really gotta mentally prepare for that, physically prepare, get all the products and medications that you need before your surgery. If you do not have your medications after your surgery, like if you stay at a recovery house and they need to get the medication for you, make sure they get it for you before your surgery. Because if you wait until after your surgery, you are going to be in so much pain. It is going to be unbearable and it will be very bad times. Very bad times. That's another story we can talk about. Anyways, this one's from my friend Ash Bova XO, and she says, where did you go? Because, oh my gosh, perfection. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I went to Dr. Alex Earl, and I think that he really made it the way that I want it to be. Um, obviously, I would like to have a little bit more, but there's a limit to how much you can put in and take out. So they did as much as they possibly could for me. Um, and of course, some areas, the fat doesn't stick as well. So like the, the hip dip areas, each time I've gotten it, the fat they just like went away. I think that they did the best that they could and I'm really happy that I chose Dr. Alex Earl. Not sponsored obviously, I just, I just am glad I chose him. <laughs> Paul Anthony 2 says, how soft is it? It's, it's completely soft. It's just the same fat that was in my body already, just taken from my stomach to um, my butt and hips and wherever else I <laughs> may choose to have it. But yeah, so it's the same squish level as any fat on my body. Metal Barbie 89 says, weird question, but does your ass feel heavy? I don't know how else to ask it. That's a totally valid question and you asked it perfectly fine. <laughs> it actually does feel quite heavy, especially like if I'm jumping, um, like I'm not sure for anyone out there who has boobs <laughs> and you know when you're jumping down the stairs jumping down the stairs when you're like running down the stairs or just running in general and they like kind of and it's heavy right so like imagine that but like more tissue on top of it and more fat um so yeah like when i'm running it's super heavy if i work out i need to wear something that's like really high compression so that it kind of limits the movement a little bit so yeah it definitely definitely feels heavy <laughs> it definitely feels heavy curvy underscore girl 95 says what was the cost and where did you get it done what state so i believe i said this before but the total cost i'm 12,500 ish and i got it done in miami florida which you really should be very careful about if you are considering to be doing a bbl in miami there are a lot of bad doctors and dangerous clinics and people who have false certifications and will just try to lure you in with cheap prices do not cheap out on a BBL do not cheap out on a BBL please okay do your research and make sure you choose a surgeon who is safe please with that being said there are a lot of bad surgeons in Miami there are also some really good ones if you're not looking to go out of the country because that's a whole different story there are plenty of good surgeons outside of the country but if you're looking to stay in the country and you want something more fake um, like I do I think Think that Miami is a good place to go but again do your research and choose the right surgeon and do not cheap out curvy underscore girl 95 also asked how long does the recovery take so um, the recovery until you can kind of resume normal life it takes about six ish weeks but really more like three months I would say because you have to wear your compression garment for 24 hours a day except for showering of course for the first six weeks uh, like 100% so it's really really uncomfortable and frustrating and you can't kind of do much and it still hurts and you can't sit down for six weeks so let's start with that that's a whole other thing I forgot to say you can't sit down for six weeks on your ass at all that was so difficult I was laying on my stomach the whole time the whole six weeks and obviously sitting on my knees for like when I'm eating or whatever but my jaw and my chin and everything like it hurts so much because I'm just like laying on my face the whole time it was really uncomfortable the hardest part was just the not being able to sit and you can use um, like a BBL pillow or whatever they say but honestly the BBL pillow hurt a lot to use and then I was just too scared to sit with a pillow or sit on it at all because I knew that if my 
result, like if the fat went away or something happened and I sat earlier than I was supposed to or I used the pill or whatever, I was going to blame myself. If I knew that I took care of it the exact way that the surgeon said, even a little more, um, I couldn't blame my fat loss on what I did. <laughs> fat underscore chubby underscore vegan underscore that underscore could underscore says, is it okay to sit after getting the surgery? I'm curious about the bathroom situation. Okay, so like I just said, it is not okay to sit after surgery, though you go to places like DR or Colombia or other countries that do it, they may have um, different regulations and it's said that people who go to get BBLs over there, uh, the fat is deposited, I believe, like under the muscle or just deeper in general. You could fact check me on this, I'm not sure, so please um, just check before you take my word for that so it goes away less easy so people i believe sit from day one if you get it somewhere else but in the united states it's generally the rule that you can't sit after surgery for six weeks oh the bathroom situation so uh this may be tmi so skip this little part if you don't want to know something really gross the bathroom situation when you get a bbl is that you use uh like a a female urinal if you're a female or have female parts so that's kind of the situation it's really frustrating so the the garment has like a little slit in the bottom and you just kind of you know use the female urinal and it is not always the cleanest situation because sometimes you miss and sometimes I'm gonna stop there I could say a lot more but I'm not gonna <laughs> Gabriel Gonzalez says, do you have to diet and exercise a certain way to maintain the look after? Absolutely 100%. Um, they say to up the healthy fats in your diet. Um, and then of course exercising helps, but not like cardio and stuff like that because you don't want to do anything that's going to contribute to fat loss. So basically they say to maintain your weight or gain a couple pounds, but nothing much. So I do struggle with that because I don't know where to draw the line, you know, um, and I gain weight really easily. So it's definitely hard for me. So I'm trying to be really consistent in the gym it's not working sometimes I go sometimes I don't but I really need to focus more on that because um, I want to make it even bigger but yeah <laughs> Kenny underscore med and mild crust both asked if I can show pictures of before and after so I will try to find some and when I do I'll put them on the screens right here hope that helps shotley.crew asked were you not feeling confident about your booty so that's um Kind of yes and no. So the goal was Pixar mom, basically. So something really like unattainable and fake, which is not a realistic expectation. And I know that. So even though I'm asking for that, I'm not really asking specifically for that. And I'm going to be upset, right? When they don't, when I don't get that, because it's unrealistic, but that is like the goal. So when I asked my surgeon what he could do, basically I was like, make me as like, look like that as much as, you know, realistically possible. Um, so that was kind of like the goal. Um, that's why I got two and um, I didn't really like the shape of my body. Everybody has insecurities, you know, so that was like the driving factor behind it really just because I like I want to look like a fake bitch. Want to look like a cartoon or straight from anime. <laughs> yeah, so that also answers Supreme Fatty 740's question. Why did you want to go bigger? So yeah, because I just want to look like I'm straight out of an anime or a cartoon. Super unrealistic and unattainable as I said. So when you ask your surgeon for what you want, it's important to know even if you're asking for something that may be a little unrealistic, just know that they can only do so much. So with my first BBL, um, my skin was really tight and he couldn't put that much fat in and he told me that and obviously that was really sad. <laughs> but it was what it was, you know. So they'll tell you kind of what's in the realm of reality. TJ9401 says, probably a dumb question, does it feel more comfy to sit on the couch or about the same? That's not a dumb question at all. It actually um, is less comfortable. I think, um, I'm not really sure if anybody else has had this issue. Let me know if you've had a BBL and you do, but I'm actually much more sensitive now um, on my bottom area, even my legs, my thighs, like my butt, anywhere. So sitting for any like long period of time does get really uncomfortable. Sometimes it hurts. Um, not like that much, but it's just like I feel it, you know? So it's it's not more comfortable definitely less comfortable but i don't know if it's just my mind playing tricks on me or if it's like i'm actually more sensitive so i hope that answers your question so a lot of people are surprised that i have one which is really crazy to me because i don't think that i look natural and i don't want to look natural but uh i'm hearing that i do look natural so i know that you mean it in a nice way and i appreciate it but i do not want to look natural and that's also something that you have to consider when you get a bbl because it's not going to come out the 100 uh, the way that you think it is going to come out and there will always be something that you're going to struggle with you know um, it just can't be perfect. It, it's just surgery can't fix all your problems And I think that's really important to note that um, before going in and considering getting one because if you're a perfectionist or somebody like who if they're given the results even like one centimeter off centimeter 
one centimeter off of what you expected, um, then you shouldn't get surgery because you have to cope with the reality that it's not going to be 100% what you want and your body will change over time. So the body that you have right after surgery or six weeks after surgery is not what it's going to look like a couple years down the line, especially depending on what you eat and how you exercise, like I said before. XFF Line Enigma says, did you talk to your friends about it before getting it? Yeah, I told pretty much everybody if they asked because I think it's super important to be transparent about, you know, procedures I've had done and stuff like that because I don't want to be one of those people who, you know, claims natural when they're not I think that's really messed up um, I see a lot of bigger creators do that too and it just makes me so mad because how, how can you do that when you have you know an influence on people and you're giving people these false beauty standards and it's super messed up and it just drives me crazy so yes I will always be transparent about anything that I've had done and I did tell my friends about it and I made some TikToks and stuff about it as well to show people you know the kind of the process and why I wasn't making regular videos and stuff like that if you have a influence I should say if you have a large audience um, and people are asking you about your body I don't think that you should lie I understand people are can be insecure about sharing the details of their surgeries and that may be okay like I said if you don't have a large audience or people you know aren't questioning you know why don't I look like that people are gonna ask that question so um, I think it's just important to be open you're going for um, a look that's more on the fake side you know so like I said I want to look fake and I want like the crazy hips and the tiny waist and without a BBL it's just really difficult to achieve that and it can be achieved in like posing and photos if you have like a lot of muscle and you can manipulate um, the way that you look in photos and stuff like that with your body and posing like I said but to look like that the way that I would like to look like I said, fake, unnatural Pixar mom style, uh, it, it just can't be achieved by working out. Zane's World with a zero says, if you could tell girls one thing before they get a BBL, what would it be? That's actually a really amazing and difficult question because there's so much information that I would like to relate to people who are thinking about getting BBLs and, you know, in their research stages and just wanting one in general or curious. The one thing, I think the, the most important thing that I would have to say is that you need to research your surgeon and make sure that you're going to somebody who is focused on giving you, you know, a safe surgery um, and, and will tell you if your expectations are unrealistic and just be honest with you. That's the most important thing. You do not want to go to a chop shop. You don't want to go to a clinic where they're doing like 10 cases a day. That's so dangerous. So do your research on your surgeon and make sure they are board certified. That's, that's the information. Make sure your surgeon is board certified and focuses on safety. I don't look and book a surgeon just from their Instagram photos because people are photoshopping out here. Don't do that. Do not be fooled. Scobbydoo075 says, is it 100% safe? No, it's not. I believe it's actually one of the most dangerous cosmetic surgeries. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to fact check that one. But um, no surgery is 100% safe. There's always, you know, a chance of having complications and stuff like that. So also something to be aware of when you're looking into getting surgery. Darian underscore underscore T says, how much improvement did you see as much as you expected less more? So this round, I actually did see a lot of improvement. I'm not going to post the before and after pictures that they took here because I actually can't because it would be against the guidelines but I saw a lot of improvement in my hip area before I was kind of like boxy and square or rectangle height I guess um, and now I have a little bit more projection in my hips and in the butt area uh, as well but it did make my cellulite worse so that's also something to note it will not improve your cellulite at all if anything it'll make it worse because um, the dimples when there's less fat it's not going to be as shown so when you push on those it's more um, like pronounced it'll show more so that's something that I don't love <laughs> which I'm working on right now and I could make a video about that if you want to hear about my experience with QWO or Quo um, injections for cellulite it's not going well <laughs> anyways underscore underscore dot Gabby dot underscore <laughs> n dot n says do they actually put uh, to put you fully under for the procedure yes i was under anesthesia and for me anesthesia is the worst when i wake up i like can't stop shaking like i shake uncontrollably like so cold it's so uncomfortable for me um i hate it but yeah i was fully under i would not want to be awake for that oh god I'm christina ferugia underscore i hope i'm saying that right and it says, hi, I'm going to do BBL as well, and I love yours. How many fat did you have to gain to get your to get your look as to how you was before, and who is your doctor? Okay, so before I got my second round, I actually had lost like 30 pounds. I fluctuated a lot. That's a whole other story. 
but um, I was really, like at a low weight point before this BBL. They told me to gain like 10 pounds and I ended up gaining 15 or 20. So I went a little overboard, unfortunately. Um, that's what happens when you tell me to gain weight, I guess. I was like, I can eat whatever I want. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I gained about that much, but they told me based on my, how, how much I weighed at the time and then I sent them photos as well so they can kind of like look and see what they were gonna deal with. My surgeon uh, this time was Dr. Alex Earl in Miami, Florida. The first round was Dr. B Fix It. The second question is from Uh He's Me. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, I'm really sorry if I butcher any names. I don't mean to. Sometimes reading usernames can be kind of difficult, but it says, How much was it? Did you do the massages afterward? How do you feel now with your new body? So I believe in total it was about 12,000, 12,500, something like that, um, because I added thigh lipo as well, but I think the base BBL was 10,000. Uh, yes, I absolutely did the massages after. I still do them sometimes, I'm um, just not as frequently. Um, it's extremely important to get your massages after your BBL. Um, if you don't get them, you can, you know, get fibrosis or just have other issues. You really need to um, drain the fluids and just get the, all the lumps and bumps out. Massages are extremely important after a BBL. Please make sure you do your research and find a good massage therapist who does lymphatic drainage massages and specializes in post-op care because that is also going to determine how your final results will look. This one is from my friend Ghost Kitten XX, and she says, how long did the pain last for me? Uh, a while, I think. <laughs> Honestly, it's, uh, until like the bruising went away, which was a couple weeks, I believe. Um, it was all kind of painful actually because you have to wear like the garment after and it was just like cinched everywhere It was really really uncomfortable the entire time um, But like the pain from the actual BBL like until I stopped taking the medication they prescribed me I believe it was like two weeks ish. Yeah, two weeks. I'll, I'll go with that <laughs> So a lot of the other questions that I received were just wanting to see what I looked like or walk away or whatever So I'm gonna try and show you a little bit, you know within the realm of safety for the guidelines But as you can see it jiggles I know there were some questions about that as well. If I didn't get to your question, it's because somebody else had already asked it, so I hope that I answered it um, in somebody else's question. I hope this video was informative for you, and if you have any other questions that weren't answered in this video, please let me know below. I'm happy to answer them. If you want me to make a video about things that you should know before getting your BBL and how to care for it afterwards, please let me know. I'm happy to do that as well. And if you have any other ideas for videos that you want to see from me, also let me know below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you have an amazing day. Thanks for watching. Watching.